The mining sector is a critical backbone of the industrialized value chain, being an essential source of input materials for significant sectors such as construction, automobiles, electronics, shipbuilding, and so on. Like oil and gas, Nigeria is well endowed with metallic minerals, but it has not exploited its potential for industrial development due to poor infrastructure for extracting, processing, and transporting exploited minerals. The current administration has made active attempts to diversify the Nigerian economy away from crude oil. One such attempt is prioritizing the mining and agricultural sector by creating incentives for investment. The approval of the medium-term expenditure framework and the fiscal strategy paper places emphasis on the importance of solid minerals in catalyzing the economic growth strategy in the country. With that being said, many have asked what the Ministry of Mines and Steels is doing to improve the sector. Joining us on the morning show to discuss what the ministry is doing to boost the mining industry is Lekon Adegbite, Minister of Mines and Steel Development. He would also be discussing steps being taken to curb illegal mining activities in Nigeria. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Uh, good morning and thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Recently, President uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, was in Kugi State, and he talked about the Ajaukuta Steel Company. In the reports that came out, they were quoted as saying the uh, federal government of Nigeria is planning to concession Ajaukuta Steel Company, and that uh, you already have a preferred uh, uh, about eleven bidders, preferred bidders, uh, showing interest. Now, uh, isn't this uh, the same route that the Obasanjo government went through? How do you concession a limited liability company uh, instead of maybe considering, you know, privatization? What is this whole idea of concession? Something that did not work in the past. What gives you the confidence that it will work this time around? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Abati. Uh, I think that word is overused, concession. Uh, at the ministerial scorecard, I said so much that this time we're not doing the kind of concession where somebody comes in and have a free ride. Uh, maybe it's the, it's the semantics, what we call it. Uh, the transactional advisor in this case uh, is guiding the federal government on the proper thing to do. We have people who are going to come in into our Jakuta uh, with their equity. We don't want a free ride anymore. That's what uh, the lessons learned from the past. And uh, if I might correct you slightly, I don't think there was uh, uh, a number of people that bid it uh, in the time when it was considered to uh, global. But that's in the past. We've learned a lot of lessons because we've had two sessions of concessions at Jakuta that failed. Uh, this time around, we are being guided by experts. Uh, and because of the value inherent in Ajakuta, which people have visited and they appreciate, uh, uh, we have a lot of interest, people who want to come in. But we're saying this time, there is no free lunch. You can't come in on a free ride. Somebody coming in must come in on equity basis. Uh, what that will be will be determined uh, by the transaction advisor, who is there to advise us to rank all the proposals that we have. The final decisions will be taken by the president in council, uh, who's the chairman of the Federal Executive Council. So that's the procedure. It, it, it's slightly different from what has happened in the past. We've learned a lot from that, and uh, of course, we are going away from uh, the mistakes we've made in the past. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Now, a report by the NESG recently said that the mining sector in Nigeria is capable of taking 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, saying that uh, with the 40, Nigeria having over 40 diverse mineral resources across 450 locations, there's great potential in this sector that hasn't been perhaps fully explored. Could you please share with us some of the successes of your ministry in leveraging opportunities in the mines and steel sector of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Um, I must first say that uh, President Muhammad Obari is the first president in the history of Nigeria to have committed money to mining. Uh, we've talked about diversification over the years from administration to the others, but actually putting money where the mouth is, President Muhammad Obari did that. 
And because mining is a very risky venture, uh, government needs to de-risk that sector by investing its own money in exploration and, of course, acquiring data, uh, which is what President Muhammadu Buhari did, uh, especially from 2017. This data is what is attracting people to this sector now. And additionally, when we came in, I noticed that we were going the route of uh, petroleum again, where we export the crude oil and then we bring in refined product. So we started a, a process, engaged stakeholders. It took us over two years, but today it's an official policy of government. Uh, it was approved by council, where without beneficiation, you cannot export raw oil from Nigeria anymore. That's a major achievement because that is what will create the jobs for us. We just don't want to be a raw material place. Uh, and I think it's already in the social media. In January, I was in Saudi Arabia and the Tesla people approached us. They wanted to come and mine our lithium uh, because our lithium is very rich. And I said, well, please, you are welcome. But we don't want you to come and mine the lithium. Come and build your battery factory here. Because the essence of mining is to make the battery. If you make the battery, then you can export it. But if you like, you come and assemble your vehicles here as well. Because this is the only way we can retain value. And this is beginning to happen for us. We're having a lot of investment coming in. Uh, uh, in the last two years, people have come in from the UK. People have come in from the US, from Canada, from Australia. They are now mining actively in Nigeria. Uh, a, a Canadian company is currently mining gold in, uh, in Oshun State. And they're doing very well. This is because we supported them, gave them the enabling environment. And of course, those factors that were militating against mining in the past, like infrastructure and so, people, even for the private sector, people are coming in now. Uh, there's a private sector initiative on using the waterways in Nigeria, which is the cheapest source of transportation. Uh, we are working with uh, the private owner of Burutu Port uh, in Delta State to make sure that we designate that port as the mineral export uh, uh, port in Nigeria. So we want to add value, beneficiation locally. This is how you can create jobs. And this is the hallmark of this administration as opposed to what has happened in the past. Okay, I mean, you said a lot about Burutu ports, you said a lot about areas, but Honorable Minister, what is being echoed everywhere is that we are not seeing the money from mining. All we are seeing is how Chinese and other national are tiffing our resource, and I deliberately use that word advisedly, tiffing our resource blind. Billions of US dollars have been lost to illegal excavation. We've got security situations of people landing helicopters and planes in deserts and taking our raw materials away. Take, for instance, what is mining contributing paltry amounts to what Nigeria can make? So all your talk is good, sir, but show walkings. Where is, where's the money? Well, uh, you need to appreciate that uh, uh, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Uh, if you look at what mining was contributing to the GDP, uh, let's say uh, 10 years ago, and what is contributing today, it's a giant leap. Well, we were doing uh, less than a billion, today we are doing 10 billion. That's a giant leap for, for government. And you see, what, uh, what the result we are seeing today is the impute. Without the impute, uh, look at the kind of uh, exploration budget that I have in petroleum. You know, it's billions of dollars. The best we got, even under President Buhari, was te uh, 300 million, uh, 100 million dollars, uh, which was 30 billion naira at that time. It's 100 million dollars, which of course we put half of that into exploration. So actually, the input is what will justify the output. A little is being put into mining right now. We could do with a lot more because the more we delist the sector, the more interested investors will come in and begin to deliver. But today, we are, we are contributing to the economy uh, as revenue uh, from the sector over 10 billion per annum. Uh, in 2013, about 10 years ago, we were doing sub 1 billion. So that's a, a great movement. As to illegal mining, yes, that's the problem because Nigeria is a very vast country. I must admit to you, we do not have the resources uh, to preempt all this illegal activity because Nigeria is vast. To say we'll be present everywhere and preempt activity, but we react to it very well.
because we have monitoring from the locals, uh, from our FMOs in the states and all that, and the security agencies are, are aiding us. We've actually arrested a lot of these nationals that you mentioned, and we've prosecuted them. We are working with agencies like customs, like immigration. How do these people come into Nigeria? On what basis? They probably have a work permit. Definitely it's not mining. So how do they come in? So we are working with the agency to tighten the news. Don't let these illegal people come in in the first place. But wherever we are allotted to their activity, we are alive to that responsibility. And we have got the support of the security services. We always go there, dislodge and arrest uh, the, uh, those illegal people. And that is why you are beginning to see uh, corporate bodies, legal corporate bodies that are now working in the sector. I mentioned a Canadian company that's working out of Oshun State. They are paying a lot of resources in terms of revenue to government. We have a, a UK company that just came in into Abuja here, Baba Sauni. They are doing gold. And they're going to be paying resources to government. These are the people we need to encourage. Uh, if, if you have a lot more legal people, they'll be able to crowd out these illegal people from the ungoverned space. Any space you give to an, a legal entity, it guards it jealously. That reduces the burden on us. Because any space you give to a legal entity, it's now their purview to guard that area and, and will not allow illegal activity. But sincerely, I admit, uh, we have some illegality uh, all over the place because Nigeria is a vast place. And I cannot come here and tell you that, yes, we have the resources to preempt this because we can be everywhere at the same time. No, it's not possible. But wherever we are allotted, we are alive to that responsibility. We dislodge them, arrest the illegal people, and of course, prosecute them to the full extent of the law. That's what we're doing. Okay, Minister, um, let me go back to Ajaukuta still. Well, now, who are the transaction advisors and how were they selected? And then what percentage, if you are talking about privatization, as you seem to be suggesting, what percentage will be privatized? And will the entire process be concluded before May 29? Well, this is just something we'll go through, go through again. And then the next government will come and say, well, we don't want to go that uh, route. Those three issues. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the transaction advisor, actually were actually selected through competitive uh, bidding process. This was done in 2018, proud to my coming on board. Uh, this, it's a Canadian firm that won it. It's not a Nigerian firm. Uh, I don't want to be advertising anybody here, but it's a Canadian firm. Uh, a, a bidding process took place in 2018, uh, went through the, uh, the Bureau of Procurement, went through the Infrastructure Concession People, ICRC, and of course, this company was selected. It's a Canadian firm. They have uh, some uh, local partners in Nigeria, but it's a Canadian firm that's advising us. And they have the pedigree. They've done this all over the world. So they are the ones advising. But as to what percentage is, go uh, is going to be uh, let out? No. What we are saying is that let these people, that's what we are telling them. They've been to my office, I've spoken with them, I've been out there at this different fora of mining uh, activity, and I told them, come with your proposal. And that is what the transaction advisor is advising. Uh, Mr. Haim, I said, look, yes, let me take 50%. Let me take 60%. We've had somebody that says, oh, he wants to buy government how to tally. We want the transaction advisor to give us the best advice. So we, are, we, are, we have about 11 people, and I said it, uh, and I think you quoted me correctly. Uh, out of these, six of them are foreign, five are local. These local people have foreign partners as well. But uh, six are foreign people that are coming, probably will come in with some local partners as well. These 11 people are coming with different proposals. So look, we want to do this. We want to buy government how to tally. Let us pay. We want to take 60% equity and all that. The transaction advisor will look at each proposal and rank them and recommend to government, look, this is your best option. This is the next one. This is the next one. So we don't have a preferred bidder here. And that process, which has started, we hope to complete even by maybe end of March. So by the time we'll leave in office, we'll have somebody who will hand Ajakuta over to. So incoming government will work with them towards a successful implementation. So it's a process that has an end date, uh, and this has started uh, in earnest. So we hope to complete it, and this is a very transparent process. ICRC is involved, uh, the Bureau of uh, uh, Procurement, they are all involved, and it's above board. All right, thank you, Honorable Minister. I'd like to go back to illegal mining, the, the menace 
or the scourge of illegal mining because this has been identified by research and, and, and the report I'd referred to earlier as one of the main, uh, main, main, the main issues with mining and, and, ta and tapping into the potentials of mining in Nigeria. I'd like you to please just clarify, are you saying that it is impossible to tackle this menace? Because you've, I said that in your previous response, to reply that because of the vastness of, of Nigeria, it is almost impossible to tackle this issue. Is that your stance on this? And then beyond that, I'd like you to also speak to um, some of the things that it identified as challenges to the mining sector in Nigeria, some of which are, um, as they've mentioned, a more productive or perhaps in terms of the challenge, an inefficient intergovernmental coordination framework from your um, from your ministry, also small scale and artisanal, artisanal mining. You yourself identified over 1,700 of this. Um, and what's the program for this to curb it would be? Well, uh, I didn't say that it's impossible for us to tackle. What I said is impossible to preempt. Look the way it is. You do not, you cannot be in anybody's mind. Somebody decides to go tomorrow and go into one forest uh, in Taraba State and start doing some illegal activity, whether it's mining or otherwise. There's no way you could preempt that. And that's what I said. But we are alive to that responsibility because we have a monetary system. Even in the ministry, we have a satellite monitoring system where we can see this illegal activity. It, 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 it's out of the ministry. And once we do this, and that's why I said, we'll react promptly. Well, uh, working with the security agencies, especially uh, the uh, civil defense people, uh, th they are very useful to us. Uh, they respond quicker. Uh, the police, are be of course, are busy with other things. Even at times, the military uh, is involved because the Office of National Security Advisor is also on top of this. When Zamfara was becoming intractable, banning was, uh, mining was banned totally in Zamfara State. And that's the only state in Nigeria today where mining is banned because there's gold in abundance and everybody was just all over the place. Now, we're not saying it's impossible. What I said is it's impossible to preempt. That is, oh, we're already there. The moment they come, we send them away. No, but when they come, we discover it within time and then we dislodge them. That is a problem. Uh, uh, artisanal mining, it's a major activity in mining in Nigeria, but that will not get us to where we're going. Yes, artisanal mining fulfills its purpose. That's why government has not made it illegal. Uh, people that are into subsistence mining, that's how they feed their family and it has its own chain. We don't want to dislodge these people and of course put them out of work and of course put the family in problem. So we are organizing artisanal miners. As you quoted a figure, that was some time back. Today we have over 4,000 cooperatives. It's a minimum of 10 uh, people coming together. When they form cooperatives, these artisanal miners will give them access to funds. We have a fund with the Bank of Industry. It's the cheapest you can get in this country. You can borrow up to 100 million naira at 5% uh, interest rate per annum for a tenure of about 20 years. It doesn't get any cheaper in Nigeria anywhere from uh, up to 100 million naira. So, but before you can access this, you must belong to cooperatives. You can't do that as an individual. So this is the way we are encouraging artisanals. These are some of the incentives, apart from the fund, we give them free training, and, and it, it also other incentives that are there, like ta taxation and all that. But you see, we will not begin to realize the potential of mining in Nigeria, the revenue that government desire, until we begin to have the big players. You know, they call them the juniors, the, uh, the middle people, and then of course the big players. And we are beginning to attract those people into Nigeria. The only way to attract them is to have data. Nobody wants to come and risk. Look, you exploit here and it's not there. You can't find it. They don't want to put money to that. Exploration could cost you up to $50 million. And then you go there and you find that there's nothing. So government needs to de-risk that sector. And that's the credit I give to President Muhammadu Buhari. He gave us $100 million in 2017. 50 million of that was used uh, to de-risk that sector. That is in exploration. We need to do more of that. We need more money to de-risk the, uh, the sector. The, the, the little data we're able to get, gather with that $50 million is attracting odds of interest from abroad. And last year, like I told you, I don't want to be mentioning names of companies on, on TV here, but a, 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 a UK company came into Abuja here, and I mentioned it, Baba Sauni. They are mining gold. They're starting work here now. We are working with some Nigerians. Another, I, I, I was in London in November, mines and money. 
a lot of people want to come into Nigeria from Canada, from America, from Australia. They want to come in because now we are de-risking the sector. We've not done enough, but at least we've started on the right path. And mm -hmm. I think uh, <coughs> the, the sub uh, subsequent government will release more money for, towards this the risking effort. Okay. Once you gather data, the data will tell you, oh, this gold is there, oh, this uh, lithium okay. is there, lead is there, silver is there. It will tell you, the data will tell you. And this is data that will attract people who will now come and mine it because it's already told them it's there. All they need to do is get it, process it, and sell. Okay. And like I said, to create value locally, we are now saying you can no longer export raw ore out of Nigeria. Okay. You must do some sort of beneficiation. Okay. And in that beneficiation process, you employ more people. And that's what we're okay. saying. Thank okay, you. Okay, Honorable Minister, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. And, and I'll keep asking you, where is the money? Nigeria is making less than 1% of its GDP from mining. And you've not been able to show us the money. All the reforms you talked about were things done in 2007, you know, comprehensive airborne geophysical analysis, you know, geological survey agency, all of that, setting up of the cadastral office, all the mapping, you know, were things done long ago. So we've not been able to, you, you talked about Osho, for instance, I've traveled about the Jebu Jesha, Jebu Fair, you know, mining belt of gold. And there are copious evidence of illegal miners selling grams of gold for as low as 10,000 or 50,000 naira, frittering our resource away. In fact, they said in illegal mining, over $3 billion leaves the country. So you've not been able to show us the money. Mining ought to be making more. In the 50s, mining was making more to Nigeria. You know, the bitumen company of Nigeria was set up in the early 1900s. We had tin, we had columbite and the likes. That was making more money. We had the colliery mine in Enugu that, if you remember, the Ivor Valley massacre in the 40s. So where is the money, honorable minister? Where is the money that could be used for our GDP Rufa, for the sector? I think you're being mistaken. You said uh, all this was done in 2017. Uh, let me say, uh, while I appreciate what my predecessors have done in office, even as we speak, we are doing airborne ge uh, geophysical survey. Currently, this has this was, it's been done currently. We have just turned the cadastral office to become online. Now you can apply for services with the cadastral office from the comfort of your country, your home, in your offices. This is a recent development. So there's a lot being done, unlike you said. But ask yourself, yes, mining was contributing. It was the mainstay of the economy before petroleum came. But what happened? We abandoned that in pursuit of petroleum. So at the point, mining was non-existent in Nigeria anymore. It was non-existent. The, that's why you have a lot of artisanal people who are not contributing anything to the economy. They are into subsistence mining. That's what happened. Nigeria left. Yes, we have, all those minerals you are talking about, they are still down there, deep, deep, deep down. So the wealth is still there, but we need to bring in people who will come and mine it, of course, bring it out, process it, and of course, deliver value to the country and to themselves. As to what you are saying, yes, uh, we have a lot of illegal activity, and that's why I said it became intractable, and then we stopped it in Zamfara. In Oshun, Oshun is another state that has a lot of gold. So there are a lot of people who buy gold illegally. And like I said, but the illegal ones will stop. And I think you are mistaken. The artisanal miners are not illegal miners. Those are the Nigerians you see who are selling their gold. These are the artisanal miners. Yes, we're trying to organize them into cooperatives to give them better technology to mine the gold so they don't pollute the waters and all that. We're working on that. This is things that is continuous in the ministry that we're working on. And uh, I gave you a figure. Well, we've now got up to 4,000 cooperatives that are registered with the ministry. We have the biometrics of all members of these cooperatives. So it's a work in progress. We cannot, we abandoned the uh, mining as far back as the uh, 70s. It became a zero thing. All the foreign companies that were doing mining in Nigeria left. The coal corporation in uh, Enugu became money bond. It was sold, it was privatized. The Nigerian mining uh, corporation was also uh, privatized. We left mining totally. And not okay. until President Muhammadu Buhari came on board that we, we started going back into mining. 
So okay. we have to learn uh, the ropes again. Minister, we have Minister, to learn to work before we begin to run. Minister, and those, the money is coming in. Those reforms were done in all six, and MCOs already have, were being built with online functionalities before now, isn't it? So, but we'll have to Please. rest it there. I'm, I'm the minister, and I'm telling you authoritatively. Okay, uh, Vice President uh, Oshibaju launched the MCO portal just this October. So don't tell me something was being done. You want, you, I am there, I'm giving you authoritatively. Okay, minister, fine. The MCO uh, going online was launched by Vice President Oshibaju to the public in October of this year. And you said it was being done. Oh, no. Okay, This is fine. something that has just been done. Prime Minister. It was launched officially October 2022 by the VP. This uh, uh, steel and mining uh, sector, a lot of people are interested in it. When Obi Ezekiel Sili was minister, we heard about master plan. When Kaudi Fahemi was uh, minister, we heard about master plan. I, I don't know what the state of that uh, master plan is. Uh, not too long ago, there were gold bars. Uh, presented uh, to President uh, Muhammad Buhari. Now, why is it that Nigeria, you've been in the chair for a number of years now, why is it so difficult for Nigeria to be at the same level with Australia, with Zimbabwe, with South Africa, countries that don't even have as many mineral resources as Nigeria? What exactly is our problem? And how do we hope to play big in the steel sector when we don't even have the supporting, the necessary supporting uh, infrastructure. And uh, some people sent messages. They said, no, that transaction advisor for Ajaokuta from Canada, you, you have to name them. Uh, it's not publicity. They said, no, mention them. Yeah, after all, you said the process is transparent. So please don't hide the name. Nigerians want to know. Maybe, you know, they will go and check them out so that uh, it's not uh, some uh, kangaroo company. Over to you. Okay, uh, I'll start with that. That company is called CPCS. Uh, that's the name of the company. It's a Canadian company. Like I said, uh, it was before my time. Uh, it was in 2018 that they were brought in. And I just resuscitated the process when I came into office. Uh, as to the plan, yes, uh, Minister Fayemi uh, started what he called the roadmap. Uh, that is what he called the, yes, it was called a roadmap, a 10 year roadmap brought in the academia, the industry, people from the ministry, and they looked at it, and of course, they were able to plot where Nigeria should be in 10 years, from 2015 to 2025. When I came into office, I had to think out with that plan. It was a very good plan, but then, of course, like all plans, we need to adjust with our present-day reality. And part of that was why I was able to, I looked at the gaps and said, look, yes, uh, I, 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 we must have a domestication policy. And that is what we've done, uh, where people can no longer export raw oil. So it's in line with uh, uh, the intent uh, of minister, that. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, I now it's for us to just uh, wrap it up. Uh, if we could just uh, continue from where you left off, I had asked you, why is the mining sector so difficult in Nigeria, whereas they get it right in other places, good bars and all of that. Can you hear me? I'm not hearing you here in the studio. I'm not at par with countries... Okay, please go ahead. I can oh, hear you. Sorry, uh, I don't know. I'm talking very loudly. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Hello? Please go ahead. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, you asked why, why Nigeria is not at par with countries like Australia, Canada, and stuff like that. And I will tell you immediately, uh, or South Africa. Uh, these are countries that have been doing mine in the last 200, 250 years uh, uh, without interruption. They had no petrol to break uh, that. Nigeria, we are doing very well with mining, and we could have developed it uh, as uh, uh, technology grew. But we left mining, like I said. Mining went to zero in Nigeria. So that is why we are not at par with those countries, and it will take a while for people who have been doing this for the last 200, 250 years, for Nigeria that's just starting again in the last uh, 10 years, to say you want to catch up. It's going to take a while, but like I said, the beauty of Nigerian mining is the fact that because we have a lot of uh, green areas. For instance, I'll give you just one data. To mine gold in Nigeria will cost you uh, something like $400 uh, an ounce. That's the cost of mining. While in mature jurisdiction, it costs about $1,200 to mine. And you sell at the same price. So a player would rather be in Nigeria because the, the, the mineral is closer to the surface. 
So you make more profit when you sell because the price is the same out there. So that is why investors want to come into Nigeria where there is data. So it's going to take a while, but Nigeria will get there. I can assure you of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Honourable Minister uh, Lekwa Adegbite, Honourable Minister of Mil St Mines and Steel Development. Thank you.